Okay, this is yet another series of videos I'm making for my uh, website, pfsensesetup.com. A series of instructional videos in which I show you how to do some basic things with the pfsense firewall. And in this video, I'm going to cover uh, dynamic DNS. So I'm going to set up a dynamic DNS entry in, uh, under with the pfsense firewall. And I'm going to use it to access a locally hosted website. And it's a tall order, but I think it can be done um, in about 15 minutes. So first, I'm going to, to introduce some basic concepts here. Um, dynamic DNS is a method of automatically updating a name server in the domain name system. Um, the scenario that, that uh, we face is something like this. Um, you have... You know, let's say you have in your in your home a resource that you want to to share with other people. Uh, maybe you have maybe you're playing Minecraft. Um, maybe you have a an FTP server, and you want to give your friends or maybe clients access to that resource. So you have to get past you know let them get past your firewall and access it somehow. Um, the problem is that how do you access it? Well, you use the IP address, that's your WAN IP address, which was probably assigned to you by your uh, ISP, your Internet Service Provider, um, probably uh, through their DHCP server. Um, and I can see two problems here. One of them is that your, your IP address may change. Uh, you, you know, your you may there may be an interruption in, in service and and when you come back up you may have a different ip ip address in addition um if you change routers um you might end up with a different ip address assigned to you so your ip address may change in addition to that um ip addresses are hard to remember so you know ideally what you want is a domain name associated with that ip address but there's a solution to the problem there, but uh, that uh, creates a new problem, which is uh, you know the fact that traditional DNS uh, systems are kind of slow. I mean, it, it it's gotten faster than it used to be, um, but it still takes up to two hours for a change in 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 DNS to uh, propagate its way through all the DNS servers, so it's so somewhat slow. It might not meet meet your needs in that sense. So we need a faster means of of uh, of updating DNS, and dynamic DNS is is the way to go here. Um, and there's two different methods of uh, implementing DNS. One of them is to update a traditional DNS record without manual editing, and that's covered by RFC. 2136, and you can read that all about that on the uh, IEFF website if you're so inclined. Um, and second way is to use an update client provided by a third party, and that's what we're going to do today. And there's there used to be a company called uh, DynDNS, and actually if you go to the website here, they used to provide a free a free domain name. Um, they now charge forty dollars a year, as you can see. Um, actually, we can make this a little bigger. Yeah, forty dollars a year, which is a reasonable price if you value the service. But why pay for it when we can get it for free? And that's what I hope to do today with uh, by going to DuckDNS. And I already have it open in a separate tab here. So we're at www.duckdns.org, and I'm going to do login with Facebook here. And we're going to uh, log in. And you see there's one domain already. I'm, I'm going to create a new domain here. And I'm just going to call it mypfsensebox.duckdns.org. All, all these domain, these um, the free domains uh, piggyback off of duckdns.org. So it's always a something, something, something dot duck dns dot org so it's um a uh a subdomain of duck dns dot org so let's do add click on add domain here so we have my pf sense box um so now we have 
we've created our our domain. So now the first thing we want to do next is uh, click on install. So I'm going to click on that and open it up in a new tab. Um, and we we want the Windows client for DuckDNS. So I'm going to go to Windows GUI. Um, and this is uh, just to get the client. So I'm going to choose the domain here. And uh, the, they give you a link here to the client software at www.etx.ca. So I'm going to open that up in a new tab. And we uh, let's take a look here. Um, they have three links here, one for zip, a zip file, a RAR archive, and exe file. I'm just going to go with the exe file. I'm going to click on that. And uh, we'll do save file here. And that will save the file and click on it, this. And we'll open containing folder. Um, and here you have DuckDNS install. So I'm going to click on that and run the installer and uh, that will give us the setup box here so we'll click on next and we'll install it in the, the default folder and I don't need a desktop icon so I'm going to leave that unchecked um, and we'll do install and it should install fairly quickly now notice that it doesn't start the uh, by default it doesn't automatically start the uh, duck DNS client so I'm gonna have to do that um, myself but actually first let's go let's go back to the uh, duck DNS install page and there's not there's an entry here for pfSense so I'm going to click on that and it gives you instructions on how to set it up with pfSense and notice that they have here an update URL which contains a token um, and they tell you what the result match has to be, and they show you the pfSense, the setup page in pfSense, and what and what you have to do. The username can be empty, and the password can be en empty. And for service type, we choose custom service. Um, so we're going to have to do that. But first, I'm going to I'm going to set up the pf the uh, Duck DNS client, and to do that, I'm going to need the token. So I'm going to highlight everything from after the equal sign but before the ampersand and copy that to the clipboard and let's see we're gonna we're gonna run the the duck dns client here and click on duck dns um so notice i have powershell here installed on because uh you know so i got the start menu back even though it's windows 8 so, um so we have the duck dns client running here I'm gonna click. I'm gonna right mouse click on on the Duck DNS icon here. I'm gonna select Duck DNS settings, um, and I'm going to enter the token here. And for the domain, it's, it already says my PFSense box, so I uh, don't have to enter that. And I'm gonna click on OK. And it says Duck DNS settings successfully validated and saved. So the duck DNS uh, client is configured now so now I'm going to highlight everything in the, in the update URL and copy that to the clipboard and now we're going to go to our pfSense firewall and uh, configure that so I clicked on login here and we're at the dashboard so what we need now to do is to go to services and go to uh dynamic dns on the services menu so click on that notice there's no entries we want to make an entry so i'll click on the plus button here so the service type as i mentioned earlier we have to set that as custom and uh, as said we we require no username and no password update url is is what i copied to the clipboard so i'm going to paste that in here and the result match has to be okay and for description, I'm just going to say duck DNS. And I'm going to click on save. Um, so that should that should be it for setting up the basic uh, dynamic DNS configuration. But now, 
you know, we probably want to set it up to work with some service. So as an example, I said, let's set it up to work with, you know, so that we can access a local um, website. And I have a, a Linux Mint system with running Apache, so I can use that to host a website and redirect people who go to, uh, well, oh, I forgot to enter the, the uh, host name, so I'm going to go back and edit this. Um, so what was the host name? Okay, uh, this is interesting. So I guess the host name, you have to enter the host name, um, or maybe you don't have to enter the host name. I guess you don't have to. Okay, let's let's cancel out of that. Um, you might not have to enter the host name. Let me just see if we're if we're getting a ping result on uh, um, ipfsense.dns.org. Okay, it looks like it's working. So I guess you don't have to enter the host name here. So uh, okay, let's let's set up a firewall rule so that we can uh, redirect so that we can allow. Well, actually, we want to set up NAT port forwarding here to redirect people to the to the uh, Linux Mint box that has Apache running on it. So another problem that we have here is that my internet provider blocks port 80. So I can't host a website on port 80. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use a different port and just redirect people to port, uh, re redirect traffic to port 80 on the uh, Linux Mint box. So I'm going to create a firewall rule here. So I'm going to set interface is going to be WAN, protocol is going to be TCP, destination is going to be uh, WAN address, and uh, destination port range I'm going to set up to run on port 1234 and the redirect target IP is going to be the IP address of my um, of my Apache or my well my Linux Mint box running Apache so it's going to be 192.168.3.101 and the redirect target port is going to be port 80 so um, and we're going to uh, add an associated filter rule so that uh, it automatically creates a firewall rule for this. Um, so I'm going to click on save. And uh, it says the NAT configuration has changed. We have to click apply changes here to, for the changes to take effect. Let me just go to uh, firewall rules just to make sure that the rule was created. And it looks like we have a matching uh, firewall rule here. Um, and it's going to allow traffic to port 80 on the uh the, the linux mint box and i'm going to go to the linux mint box now here i'm going to edit the uh index.html page for our website just to show that we're uh, you know we have this is what we have here it's just a very simple html page and i'm going to call it uh my pf sense box home page and we'll call it we'll Copy this into the heading here too, and uh, there we go. So we have a, a, a very simple index.html page here, and so we have we have everything set up. We have the dynamic DNS, we have the NAT and and the firewall rule. So we should be able to access this from uh, a web proxy. So I'm going to www.proxysite.com I'm going to try to access uh, my pfsense box dot duckdns.org and our port remember is 1234 so I'm going to click on go and lo and behold my pfsense box homepage and we can make this a little bigger too so yeah there, there we go. It seems to work. So uh, we're able to do this in, uh, you know, a little bit more than 10 minutes. Um, so there we go. We've set up, we've configured uh, a dynamic DNS and we've used it to access a resource be behind the firewall. Okay, well, this is the end of this video. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, check out my website at pfsensesetup.com and uh, I'll see you in the next video.